Hi everyone and welcome to the Fish Head Creations podcast where I pull out one of my interesting knitting projects every time and talk you through the details. My name is Anna, you can find me as Obsti on Ravelry and as Caledonian on Instagram and as always I'd really like to hear from you. I'm very sorry to be back a week later than expected but last week when I was sitting down to record or at least preparing to record all my technology just decided to act up at once. The computer I use for editing just didn't want to really work. Well, it's my laptop, it works usually, but for some reason it had its issues that day and the internet wasn't working well so I couldn't really upload and the computer I used to upload had, de had decided to just lose connection to all its USB ports. It's a very old computer, I pretty much only use it to upload videos, but I didn't want to use my laptop for that and just close it down by having it upload and not being able to use it really because it really slows it down. So yeah, and then it was just dark and dreary and I didn't feel like recording anyway, so I decided against it. But I'm back now and I hope you all had a very happy Christmas, nice holidays um, and a good start to the new year. Um, I, well, I had a very relaxed Christmas for most of the time because we decided to spend Christmas Eve at home and only go to see family on Christmas Day. And Christmas Eve is really the most busy day of the holidays here. And then, yeah, same for New Year's, we just spent the evening with a few friends and pretty much by 10 p.m. on, Christ uh, on New Year's Eve we just were all so tired that we could barely stay awake until midnight. It was nice, it was relaxed and I really did enjoy it. So I hope you all had a good start into the new year. Did you make any resolutions? Did you decide on a word for the year? I never really did either of those, but for some reason I have both for this year, so we shall see how I get on with it. My only resolution is to just get up earlier and get to sleep earlier, because for the most part I'm a morning person and I really enjoy getting up early and it just does me good and I do sleep better, but uh, my boyfriend is the exact opposite. And so we compromised somewhere in the middle because he usually spends his evenings on his computer in the bedroom already, so I can't sleep. But he recently purchased a new computer, which now is in the office, so I can kick him out of bed in the evening and just go to sleep whenever I want. Which means I can go to sleep earlier than before, and that means I'll get my sleep and can get up earlier. And it's really... I've been doing it since the, the new year and on every business day and just on weekends I allow myself to sleep in and it really does me good and I do feel better so I hope I can keep it up and I never really thought about a word for the year although I do like the idea of people doing it and for some reason structure just came up in my mind so that's my word for the year and we shall see if I really refer to it but my life needs more structure and both my, my thesis writing, my working life, my pattern writing which I want to take up more and also my making, they all need more structure and more plan to it. So we shall see, we shall see how I get on with it. But enough talk of resolutions and my life in general. You're here for the knitting I hope and um, of course I have some knitting to talk about. This is my and it's pullover. This pattern was recommended to me by one of my Instagram friends, so thank you very, very much, Shibar, Joe. Um, it's a pattern from an old, or older, I think, 2017 issue of Interweave magazine, which I've been talking about that I purchased the whole magazine as a digital download as opposed to just one pattern because it was pretty much no difference in price, and I'm quite happy I did because I really want to knit some of the other patterns from that issue. But so far I have knitted this one. It's, as you might have guessed, knitted from Finkhof. Organic Merino 2 ply sport weight. Um, it's my first ever garment I knit for myself in, in pieces and seamed. Um, you might remember from the episode I did about the cardigan I did for my mum. That, that was my test run. And I didn't really enjoy the seaming. I didn't enjoy it on this one either, but the knitting was a lot more enjoyable just because it's textured all over, so there's no long pearl, pearl rows because, well, there's knits and pearls in both rows, in both directions. And um, 
Also with this welding sponge, uh, kind of sticky, toothy yarn, the seaming was a lot easier. But yeah, let me let me talk you through it. So you knit the the front and back flat. They are pretty much the same, other than that the back goes up higher, and yeah, you bind off for the neck earlier in the front, and both sleeves are just the same. Um, it's full of red fluff because it was close to the red, the red Christmas cardigan in my wardrobe. Whatever. Both leaves are uh, knit flat as well and then sewn onto the garment. So what I did is I started with the back just because it was the largest panel and I wanted to have it out of the way. Um, I knit the whole thing on 4mm needles and 3.5mm for the ribbing. So it has quite a bit of ribbing, I think it's 20 rows or so. And then as you start into several sections of cable pattern, it's symmetrical which makes it a lot easier to follow. Um, in the end I only needed the pattern for, for the large central cable panel because I just couldn't get it into my mind but everything else is just intuitive and there's always cabling happening on the right rows and none of it on the Wrong side rows, so quite easy to follow, quite relaxing, but you need the pattern, uh, at least I needed the pattern at hand for the central cable panel. Not because it was hard, just because I couldn't remember it. It has a quite large repeat, as you can see, it's, I think, 32 row repeat, so I just couldn't remember it because it didn't happen often enough. Um, the only modification actually I made to this is I added waist shaping. So as you can see here, you have this panel of its moss stitch um, on the side and I know I prefer my garments to have some kind of waist shaping and it was just extremely easy to take out a few stitches. I think I decreased four times and then increased four times again and it just gives it slightly more tailored silhouette and I think it looks a lot more flattering than it would had I just knit it straight down. And also because I did expect this to grow. Um, you know, I've, I've knit the Beast in the same yarn and it did grow a lot widthwise. So I went with a size slightly smaller than what I would usually go by for a finished garment size, just because I expected it to grow and it did, despite the seams. But because I took care of it before and because I added the waist shaping, it really fits quite nicely in that regard still. Um, it's not, a not an extremely close-fitting garment, but it still is quite close to my shape and it's quite flattering actually. Um, so I knit the back first, then knit the, the front as well. And then it has you start to bind off here and then finish both shoulders separately. Just as any seamed garment I guess. Then I knit the, the sleeves which are just mainly mustard all over and at the time I really was craving a texture, textured knit. So this was just perfect. The sleeves are quite a mindless and relaxing knit actually because it's mainly moss stitch and you're increasing in the moss stitch and then there's just this tiny one by one cable or those two one by one cables and some twisted stitches uh, up the side of the arm. Excuse me, I don't need an ambulance right now. Um, right up to the top. It's just, well, it's not hard, you can remember it, you can do it without any pattern, but it makes it easier to count rows, which I made use of. Um, because I, I, I don't use row counters, I just usually count rows, but if there's some kind of four row repeat, that makes it a lot easier to count. Um, just because you don't have to count that far. Um, so yeah, then when I had knit all the pieces, which took a few weeks, but not too long, I have recently done uh, just counted how much I've knitted last year and apparently I finished 79 projects of which 22 or 23 even were adult socks and more than half of those, I think 13 pairs were colorwork socks and I finished 15 garments and pretty much 16 because one was almost finished and the other was already started so those two combined had, hadn't well. The needle on my one project broke, so while waiting for a replacement, I cast on another one. And had I 
been able to finish or to, to continue to work on the one project, I would have finished 16 garments last year. Which is crazy because even with those 15, come up to 1.25 sweaters or garments a month. A month. Which is crazy. So I think it took me three weeks to knit all this. And then it took me another week to just get off my behind and seam it. Because, as I mentioned, I don't enjoy seaming. But actually it wasn't too bad because um, this woolly sticky yarn made it a lot easier not to pull too tightly. Which was my main problem when I was seaming my mom's cardigan. I would just pull too tight and this, it would all pucker in. Especially along the long side seams. So with this one, it was a lot easier. I metro stitched it again, just because that's the only thing I apparently can do in a way that looks half decent. Um, I started as you do with the shoulder seams, and then actually this pattern had you do it the way I prefer to do it, which is do the side seams first, then do the underarm seams, and then set it in the closed sleeves. I don't really enjoy setting in the sleeves first and then doing the side seams in one go. I, I think it feels like too much movement is possible still in the garment if I do it that way. And if I just do the side seams first and close my sleeves up, it's only the sleeve cap and everything else already stays in its place. And for me, who I'm, who I am very inexperienced in seaming, that's just easier to manage. If I continue to do seam garments, maybe sometime I'll try the other way around and I'll find that it actually is easier or better. But I'm quite satisfied with how it looks and it is a lot easier for me to manage if I just do the side seams first and then pretty much have a vest which I attach the sleeves to. Then to have the, the side seams and the underarm seams open still. So what I did was um, I took those safety pin stitch markers, those cheap little plastic ones, and I just attached the sleeve cap to, um, to, to the outside with those. Just put in one at the top, one at the bottom, and then just worked my way by folding it in half and attaching it in those places. So I would just work my way inside on both sides and then seamed it. And I'm really quite happy with how it looks. Um, my pretty much only concern with this is when I'm wearing it, as you might be able to see, it's quite far outside on my shoulders. It's kind of okay, it's kind of, it, the seam kind of still sits where my shoulders are and where the bone is, but it's already at a point where they are narrowing in quite a lot and going in. Because I just have so narrow shoulders. So in order to make a, a set of sleeve work on me, I probably would have to set it in thus far. Um, so do the shoulders half as wide as I left them on this. But most patterns just leave them out this far and it's it's a good thing they do otherwise they wouldn't fit most people because I have significantly narrower shoulders than most people of my first circumference and general size. Uh, but I don't feel comfortable enough yet with doing arm side and set in sleeves to modify it myself because I would have to go in a lot further here already to make it work that way. So for now I'll just stick to yokes because really I think they look more flattering on me but I might get back to seam constructions and just experiment with the shoulder width and uh, where they sit on me because I think if they were sitting here it would be uh, it would look quite nice but they do sit a little too far outside. So the last thing to do, which I actually did before I set in the sleeves, because just because I didn't want them attached it in the way all the time, was to pick up for the neckline. You had some stitches bound off in a row here, and then well, bound off in a curve here, and bound off in one straight line again at the neck. So it was quite easy to pick up, because most of it was just picking up the bind off. And yeah, then I think it's one pearl row, which gives it a quite nice transition, which I really, really like. Um, and then it's just one by one ribbing again and bound off. And a stretchy bind off at the top. Um, I found that doing... Is it Judy's surprisingly stretchy bind off? I think it's Jenny's Magical Cast On and Judy's surprisingly stretchy bind off. But I, I might mix up those names. But you know which one I mean. Um, 
it does flare a lot, especially if you first do it. But when it's blocked, it's all right. And at least in woolen spun yarns. So this is the surprisingly stretchy bind off, and I think it, it sits all right. Before I blocked this, it was puckering all around, but when you block it, it really sits quite nicely. And it goes over my head, which this one, as you might remember, doesn't. Um, so yeah, I, I did the neckline first and then set in the sleeves. And here we go. That's my seamed cabled jumper. Which looks surprisingly similar to the Beast because this yarn, although the darker shade they offer, is very, very close to the one I used for the, the Beast. And if you do an all over cable jumper in pretty much the same color and the same yarn, they will look similar. But this one fits a lot better than the Beast does. It's not as boxy, it's not as short, and I'm really happy with it. I, well, other than the waist shaping, I pretty much knitted to pattern, except for the sleeves, which I did lengthen by a few centimeters, just because I want them to go over my hands, like this, and not sit too far up. For this one, it's, I do like the length, but usually I want them a little longer, just to go almost up to my knuckles here. You don't see many cats around here outside. But there's one, completely black. Never seen it before. Well, back to knitting. I thought it's a cute kitty. Back to knitting. Um, I don't think there's too much more to say about this Ennis pullover. I really enjoyed the pattern. I'm quite happy to follow her magazine pattern that's written in a very short, non-wordy way just because it annoys me to read through too much text and I prefer to just have numbers and row counts or centimeters or whatever. So it worked quite well for me but it might not be the most beginner-friendly pattern because just because it's it's a, written in a very condensed way as you have to do in print. Um, yeah, what else? I don't think there's too much more to say. Um, I have finished, I have finished the Thistle Cardigan. It's drying right now and I hope to stick it and I will film an episode on it next week, promised. I haven't tried it on yet, so I'm a bit nervous, but it does look alright. And it's a cardigan. If anything goes completely wrong, I'll just wear it open. So, we shall see, but it's done. It's finally done. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for watching again. And I hope to be back to regular podcasting, and I hope it's not too dark, because we don't really get much light. It just stays in this winter half-light, gloomy, whatever it is. We are not that far up north, but we do feel the winter light, especially in this, in this flat, because we have windows to the east and west. So... Usually in summer we get a lot of light through this big window here because it goes to the west. Um, but in winter the sun just doesn't come up high enough and whenever, by, th by the time it gets around the house behind me, it's already behind the house is next to us. So it really stays quite dark inside here, although it's not too dark outside. So I hope you can see or could see anything I was showing you. Um, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!